Hi everyone, it's Deborah, and today I'm starting a new project. So first of all, before I do that, I wanted to just show you a couple of things that I found. I was lucky enough to spend September in the UK, staying with my cousin who lives there, and I did a bit of vintage shopping while I was there, and I just wanted to show you what I got. So this is a cricket scoring book that I found. It's from the 1950s, and it does have a little bit of writing in it that you can see here but most of the pages are blank so I can use them in my journals and things but there is quite a lot so I might have to offload some of them because there's quite a, a bit here and it's quite long it's about it's probably 12 by maybe 6 maybe 12 by 5 so it's a great book and it's printed on both sides as well so I should be able to you know you could use it for journaling or I might rip it up and do some decorating with it it's really good and it was a I thought a really good find as well so I've never really seen anything like that and the UK has a lot of things that we don't have here the other thing I found was these in a vintage shop now I do trace my family history and these are not my family but I just couldn't leave them behind because they are original deed documents for various things so this is for the sale of a plot of land in Ashgrove in the township of Horton in the parish of Bradford dated the 1st of January 1866 and it's got stuff on both sides so there's some writing and signatures and things on this side and I'll just move that over it says signed sealed and delivered by the within name Joseph Clark um, in the presence of and then it's got some signatures I guess yes yeah, sworn by Jeff, uh, George probably, Oldfield, his clerk, and I don't know what that says. But then there's some, obviously that's a pre-stamp thing with the year and everything on it and the date. And this is just saying that they received his £97, uh, four shillings for whatever he was buying. And it's very cool because these, um, I've seen a couple of these before. These are the first ones I've managed to own though. It's got like this little pocket down here. I guess maybe other papers went in there. But what I love is it's got a little bit of um, paper or ribbon stuff here. And then over, you can see it goes through both layers to hold that little pocket together. And it's tied up, see that? And there's one on the other end. So given that it's, um, 1866 it's very well preserved it's got the original wax seals on it and the other thing with this one is it's actually a waxed paper so I guess when they do it they wax the paper to preserve it and then the whole D is here the indenture and you can see up here I just move it over it's got the original embossed stamps on it and it's got some other stamps on it from Bradford 27th of the 10th 65 and I guess that was the date that they started it because it finished in 66 and it just says here that this indenture is basically about the sale of the land and oh sorry mm -hmm. I've moved that and it's really big I guess it's um a two a three size the old sort of that how huge it is and you can see it's been folded up but it's still in beautiful condition and I love things like this little detail here which is a bit of ribbon or something and they've pushed that through and that's what the they've cut that piece of paper out around it and they're the wax seals sitting on that piece of ribbon and it's actually stuck down so I can't open it up and show you but how gorgeous is that the detail is amazing I love all the lines remembering that this is all hand done like all these lines and everything have been drawn in red ink and it's just beautiful and it's in gorgeous condition. So I think that that was, um, that was quite a, a lucky find, shall we say, that I found in a vintage shop. And I found another one, both on the same day. This one's actually older. Actually, this one of them's waxed. I think, yeah, I think this might be the waxed one. This is from the uh, 28th of July, 1829. And it's between a father and a son, Samuel Brook, son, Esquire, um, to Samuel Brook, uh, Junior. Sorry, Samuel Brook, Senior, to Samuel Brook, Junior, Esquire. And look at the beautiful writing on this one. It's absolutely gorgeous. And again, it's got, on the back of it, it's got the, the deed. Look at this writing here. Isn't that spectacular? I mean, this is beautiful. 
but this one here is just off the charts. I don't know what it says. Um, I haven't actually tried to read it, but I'm sure I could. Um, something after, anyway, I'll read, sit down and read it. And then a lovely signature, the flourish and everything. And you can actually see that they've used um, like an ink pen, you know, not a, not a biro, of course, they weren't invented, I don't think then, but like an ink pen, because you can see the differences in the thicknesses of the, the strokes that he's written. And when he signed the name, and on this side, it says again, side sealed and delivered by the within named Samuel Brook, da da da. And then it's been witnessed, and those two people have been the witness. And then on the other side, this is the beginning bit that we looked at before. But then on the back side, this one actually has more. It keeps going on this, and it talks about the indenture and what they're doing. And again, you've got this little bit of sort of ribbon. I think this one's green. The other one was blue. You can see where they've cut the paper. And then on, I'll show you that in a minute because I'll show you these. These are the wax seals again. And again, the paper's been cut. And I think yes, they've still got the little tie up here. So there's the back side of the tie and here's the front with the little tie. There is one on this end too, but they've covered it with the wax seal. So now if I just swing it around. So we'll have a look at this one. Here's the gorgeous indenture and there's the seal on the side. And again, it's um, it's talking about the, the sale of what he's, uh, what he's buying between father and son. And it outlines all of that information. And then down the bottom again, we've got the little pocket here and then the seal and then the name. And I just love it. It's just beautiful. And if, on this end, there's another uh, little uh, stamp there. So I was pretty happy with those purchases and I, um, I didn't think I was gonna be able to find anything and I was just leaving the vintage shop and I spotted these sitting on an old suitcase because there were beautiful things there, but of course I can't bring them home with me. And I just walked over and said, okay, well, I have to have them. They're just too gorgeous to leave there, even though they're not my family or even the area my family came from. So I won't be chopping these up. I haven't worked out what I'm gonna do with them. I thought about framing them, I, but then you can't see the, the, you know, the detail of the back, but I'll have a think about it and see what I'm gonna do with them. So this is my new project, which is this. I found it when I was in the UK, just in a hobby store. And I thought it would be uh, quite cool to decorate. Now, I could probably make this myself, but it was really cheap. I can't remember how much it was. It was only a few pounds and it's got lots of the, the uh, flag pieces on it. And it's a really heavyweight, strong canvas. I actually tried to get that fabric when I was in that shop because they did sell fabric but they didn't have any. They only had the uh, the more open one that we have here. So I decided that I would bring this home with me as well because it's little. And I think it's got 10 or 12 or maybe more of the banners, but anyway, the flags. Um, so I'm going to start decorating it. It's also got this string that it came with, which just slides through the top. So it's clearly got a back and front, but I thought it would be good to um, just use, and then I can hang it up in my craft room once I've decorated it. And I've been thinking about how to decorate it, of course, and when I bought it, I thought, well, I was going to do some stamping and some other things, but then my cousin gave me some lace and things. We went through her craft room and she gave me a bag of stuff to bring home. And I thought maybe it'd be nice to use that on it. The other thing I got while I was there are these buttons. So I've got these old vintage buttons and I've got more somewhere. And also I found in one of the markets, I'm gonna get a bigger one out, are these train buttons. So they're actually from British Railway. Let's bring that up so you can see it a bit more. Hopefully it'll focus in for you. So yeah, so that's the British Rail and I've got some little ones and big ones. And then these gorgeous, this, I think this is silk. I'm pretty sure these are silk covered buttons that I found in a vintage shop and some other types as well. Just, I went around and just picked up things that I thought that I might be able to use and that I like. So I might use a few of them on this project as well. And then I'll just pop these back in so they don't get lost. 
and I've got some thread and things to, so I can sew these things on. And let's just start with whatever's in this little bag of goodies that I brought home with me. Uh, this is like um, horse hair. You know, they put it in the bottom of dresses and things on the hem, like wedding dresses, so that it will stay. Keeps the keeps the hem nice and stiff. And this is some um, just some ribbons and beautiful laces. I just love lace. And you can clearly see my cousin loves lace too. And this is some vintage linen and lots of lace. So I thought, well, just start putting some stuff on. And the other thing I've got, well, I probably don't need a backing. I was thinking about putting a backing on here. Um, let's see. I've also got this. This is just a piece of, um, I think it's a linen cloth that my cousin had that she sort of ripped a big piece off for me to bring home to do something with and I might make something maybe I'll put some sort of layer down there and then I can layer it I'm just thinking of layering and whether I need something like that as well to layer that on top of I'm not sure perhaps I don't I'm not sure I can always do that on the next one we put that aside for now but I will start then so I'm definitely going to layer and I'm thinking about like when I go come down to the bottom of the flag, I'll cut around that and see if I can get that to do. The other thing, I might put a button on the bottom so it's got a bit of weight. Well, I guess when I sort of layer it up, it'll have some weight anyway. So we'll get going. And what about this? That's a nice piece. So look at this little one, so cute. I could just look at lace and things all day. It's a bit of a, bit of an, of an obsession, I think. So if I start with a piece of that and just sew that on, now somewhere I have a needle in almost all of this stuff, I think. Um, where did I put my needle? Here. And just some white thread, normal sewing thread that I'm gonna use initially, just to tack this on. I mean, it's not gonna get a lot of, um, you know, it won't be handled, so it doesn't need to be sewn down super strong. It just needs to make sure that it's going to stay on there. So I might do that. And I've got some other threads. So I thought I might do some decorative stitching as well. Not that I'm really any good at decorative stitching, but I do like it. So we'll just see how that goes. And I make sure when I do it that I can't sew on that channel because otherwise that what you know it won't pull through where I want it to go but I can put something up there I just can't sew it so I'm going to make sure that I come below that channel and just tack this on a little bit now because I've got like a there's a pattern through with this lace and this is thicker here I'm going to keep my stitching in the open weave so it's not going to be quite as visible and Look, I don't really don't care what it looks like from the back. I mean, that's not going to bother me, I don't think. If I don't uh, like what's on the back when I'm finished, I guess I could always put something on there, couldn't I? The other thing you could do with this if you didn't want to hand stitch is you could machine stitch it. And I was thinking about doing that, but I thought it's just easier to sit here and maybe just chill for a moment and do some, do some hand stitching just to tack this on. So I'm just coming in and out, just, you know, as I said, the backs don't bother me that much. If I wanted to cover that, I can, but we'll just tack this on for now so that I can get sort of have a base to work with. I just want to make sure that I'm not sort of touching that channel piece. If I accidentally sew through that, then when I go to put it up, I might not be able to slide the flags along. I don't think I've seen things like this in Australia. Spotlight might have it, but I don't know if they do or not. So that's probably enough because I'm going to be sewing through more of it. And because of that, I really just wanted to tack the top along so it didn't move too much. I'll just stitch that off. Yes, I'm not the best sewer, hand sewer. Please go and look at somebody who can actually hand sew if you want to know how to do it properly. I'm a bit rough and ready when it comes to doing hand sewing, I must say. But you know, it works, whatever works. 
Now I will tell you that when I made my wedding dress, I had hemmed it and my mother-in-law came along and pulled my hem stitches out and redid it all for me because she said it was, you know, not great. So she redid it and she was a very good sewer. It's a very good hand sewer, so I let her. So that's that bit there. I'm just wondering whether I should take that out because I can always thread it through again, I think, can't I? Yeah, it might be easier to work with if I don't have that string there. Okay. And then it's just cutting it. I might get my other scissors, the bigger scissors, because they'll cut much better than these. And the other thing I just thought about when I jumped up to get my scissors is maybe I can do some flowers on it. So I've grabbed some flowers out on my way past. And I just wanted to cut this. Cut that. And I'm going to cut this, but I'm going to save that bit because I can use that in something else. It's quite a big enough piece that I'm not going to throw that away and we don't want to waste stuff so that's that bit now let's look at some more and look at this this is really pretty it's got like colored thread pink and blue and green thread through it that's interesting isn't it okay maybe not for this and this is a piece of cloth it's just a matter of placing things and seeing what I can find if it's the right the right thing that I'm looking for Oh, maybe I'll put that up there. There's a little border as well. That's a good idea. I'll chop that. And I might use a darker thread to sew that on. Now I've got this, which is a Tim Holtz thread. It's from the um, Tim Holtz Eclectic Elements range. It's craft thread. And it's thicker than cotton. And it's also... Um, stronger than cotton as well and I've got this rather large needle because I couldn't find anything that this thread would go through the eye of the needle but I think it'll be fine I'm hoping it'll pull through because the canvas and the lace is quite an open weave I think it's going to be fine to do that so we'll cut a bit of that off and have a play with that as well so again I'm just going to start and make sure uh, okay so that's going to be an issue if I start throwing sewing through that channel unless I go right at the really very top of it or I could glue that on although I did want to sew things on because I find that the glue might sort of deteriorate over time and it might all fall apart in fact while I'm here I'm going to sew a button on if I can find the buttons here they are I thought these were a bit darker oh yeah there's a brown one those are green, those ones are green, yeah. I did find a few buttons and things when I was there that I bought just when I was wandering around a vintage shop. Not that I did that much of that, I mainly just um, stayed and you know, went out to cafes and things and it was wonderful, we had a lovely time. It's nice to spend time with somebody whose company you enjoy. I'm going to have to go through that. Make sure I've got enough room in that. Yeah, that'll be enough still for that cord to go through. Absolutely. If I keep it low, then it'll be enough room. Yes, yeah, so. And um, just a, a quick update on my health for those people who've been following me for a while, who know that I've been through quite a traumatic time having breast cancer, being diagnosed with breast cancer a couple of years ago. 2021 actually and I've had my two-year checkup on that and got a really positive result so I'm happy about that too and I'm hoping to get this video up today I'm pretty sure I'll be able to but tomorrow is my 67th birthday and it's really great to be able to say that because I didn't think I'd see my 65th and two years later and I'm still here and going strong so it's pretty cool really very happy that uh, things are working out quite well so now I've sewn that bit on I'm going to make sure I stick to the bottom of the channel with any other stitching hopefully when I get to the end I don't get myself in trouble and if I tack another button on the other end it's going to hold it 
although I do want to sort of put some decorative stitching here just trying to make sure I don't go too high with it just make a just do a little um, trying to come through and look at where I'm going I'll do some little crosses I'll start by doing the one of the legs of the cross one of the arms or whatever you call it of the cross and then I'll just go across no pun intended <laughs> you know so oh try and come up here and then down yes yeah, so it's um it's been a a rough couple of years but I think I'm on the other side of it now I've had all my surgeries I'm feeling great I have hair again which if you've had no hair it's pretty good <laughs> done a couple of little cross cross stitches or crosses there and I'm going to do a couple more I think I was going to stop at three but I thought I'd bring it down a bit and do a couple down here just because I can so I haven't really been doing very much craft at all or sewing although I did pick up an old quilt from last year the other day that hadn't done the back or the binding on and I got the backing on it and I'm halfway through quilting it and I will finish it off hopefully in the next few days maybe before Christmas certainly this uh, in this Christmas break before New Year just because I like to um, I like to quilt and I haven't really done it haven't really felt like it I've just been working on my family tree book. It's really been an obsession, something I could do without expending a lot of energy physically. And it's kept me, you know, kept my brain working for the last year. I think that looks quite cute. Yeah, we've got some little crosses there. Chop this off. And that's kind of how I've been filling my time, that and uh, hospital appointments and doctor's appointments, really. Now, I want to put another thing on this side just to balance that up and also to hold that bit of lace in place. So I think I can do that if I put it sort of here. Anyway, I hope everyone is well. Send me a message. Let me know uh, that you're you're all good and I have had a, quite a few messages actually in the last um, year or so just checking on how I'm going which has been so nice but I'm hoping I can keep the crafting up now and I have missed it I have really missed it it's just been a a mental thing I think it's been a bit of a you know a bit of a block on how you get going again when you've had a break like I've had but I think that now I am I am going again and I'll continue to do so. I must say that, you know, this is quite therapeutic really, isn't it, stitching? So if you're not good at hand stitching, I don't think you need to be. <laughs> I mean, I see the beautiful work that people do and I think, oh God, I wish I could do that. But I have to accept that I am who I am and just, you know, for all I, the, the good and the bad and and uh, you know I do some things really well but I'm not great at doing this but it's not going to stop me so I'm just doing a couple of stitches through the buttonholes and I am making sure that this one I stitched to one on either side and I'm mimicking that on this side I'm not going across the button I'm just doing the two separate holes I'm tacking this through, just doing a, 
a running stitch along here to get this on and I'm not, I don't think I'm catching that other one but I'll fix that problem in a, mo in a moment I'm the bottom one and again I'm going back to this white thread so you can't really see it Now I'll just finish tacking this piece on here so that I've got some security and then I can trim it. Now these are a paper flower, not fabric, but they are quite thick. And so I don't think that they're going to disintegrate or anything as I sew them, simply because of the thickness of them. When I was in the UK, I saw the most beautiful sampler tapestry that had been done by a young girl. And I did, did take a picture of it. It was just lovely. Of course, it was massive. So you know, I don't even know how much it was. I didn't look at the price because I was worried that if I looked at the price, I might want it. So, um, but it was beautiful. And I thought, oh gosh, and it was done in 1901. It was finished in 1901. Um, and it was just gorgeous and it was all these different things and normally a sampler will be some stitching but this one was particularly beautiful and uh, I would have loved to have kept it <laughs> but that wasn't going to be possible so I thought I'd do some just a running stitch along here I'll try and be a bit neater this time because you actually see the stitch lengths as I'm coming through so let's try and get that working a bit better. Just see how that looks. Mm, that's fine. I think that's looking okay. I'm not sure if I want to do any more on it or if I just want to sit with it for a while and uh, I'll give it a press because that bottom bit's annoying me. You can probably tell that, can you? That I didn't press it beforehand so it's popping up. Yeah, I think I'm going to sit with it for a while and I'll see, you know, it probably does need more. It's a bit sort of sparse here. I don't know whether that, uh, that probably gives me a good kicking off point for putting something else there, like under those leaves as another little piece. Yeah, that looks quite good. Maybe I'll just tack that bit on as well. So I think that's enough for now. I want to sit with it a while. I want to work out what else I want to put on here. As usual, I didn't have a plan, but I am going to add some more layers and I don't want to hide, necessarily hide all this. I really like to use some of this horse hair because that's just too cool, isn't it? I love that. Maybe I can bunch that and do like a little, a little running pleat of that. That'd be nice. You know, like, I think maybe up here. I can do a little pleated bit like that, but I might whip that down on the machine because it might be easier than hand sewing all of those little pleats and I can control the pleats better from the sewing machine. But if I do a little pleated bit, and even if it's set up, you know, if it was, I'm trying to work out how I would do that to make it still sit up. Although that might be all right if it's not sitting up. How does that look? I think that looks okay. Yeah, so I might do that and uh, oh look now I've got little <laughs> I've got little bleats in my in my thing. That's cool. I don't know if that's coming up on camera, but I've got this little concertina effect on my on my horse hair. I don't know why they call it horse hair. I think they used to use horse hair to do what this now does. It's probably why it's called horse hair. But I really like that idea of having some little pleats across there. So I think I'll do that and I will come back on another video and continue doing this and I'll also try and work out what else I want to put on these things maybe when I get those pleats on that's enough but I'm not really sure yet thanks very much for joining me this is Deborah cheers <laughs>